good evening and uh, welcome to this uh, uh, one of the last uh, videos that we are going to to share uh, because we are finally closing uh, on to the last topic that we are going to deal uh, on the react framework and uh, today we'll uh, start uh, uh, trying to close uh, what uh, what we know what the knowledge that we have on react and trying to uh, fill the gap for a complete application and uh, um, because uh, right now we are pretty say, good at, at working on the on the client side basically on handling events and calling apis but it, it will it's just uh, all of this is limited to, to basically one page uh, when, with more or less a fixed layout uh, so this week we are trying to remove uh, the issue of, uh, of having more layouts in the same application and in the other lecture of the week uh, of uh, how to handle the authentication and authorization of the user uh, today we start uh, uh, talking about the uh, React router and uh, we see the, the role the routing has uh, into a React application. Uh, first of all, we will devote, devote some time to understand what we want to achieve, what, what is the problem, and then we'll see uh, what are the, uh, the libraries and the solutions uh, in React. So first of all, uh, what are our goals, uh, what are our problems, and uh, what is uh, uh, preventing us from uh, solving this problem easily. Uh, basically, we want uh, uh, ultimately to support complex web applications. Uh, uh, so having a, a web page that is able to switch different uh, between different page layouts. Uh, so it's not just one page like the to-do list where you, where you do everything on that page. Maybe we want to switch pages which uh, uh, views uh, different kind of contents. Uh, and so actually we have a flow of navigation across different pages. So we are trying to reconstruct the page-by-page -page navigation concept that we had in the, in the, in the old web before uh, all this single-page application JavaScript stuff, uh, but uh, we're trying also to regain, to maintaining uh, the advantage that we have in, um, in the JavaScript times. Uh, of course, one issue uh, that we have also is uh, maintaining the, uh, the, the illusion, or at least the working uh, illusion, of uh, web navigation um, that we will go into a bit more detail but actually uh, when you uh, think of a react application you can change the layout of the page but then the forward and back buttons of your browser do not work anymore uh, because the uh, the url the web page is always the same is always pointing to the react application itself um, and of course we are losing the possibility of book of uh, setting a bookmark uh, uh, on a specific page of our web application because the URL is the same so we can only bookmark the home page let's say the start and, of, and also URLs cannot be used to convey information the, the way we are used to and we also have the risk of uh, uh, having to reload the entire JavaScript application which is kilobytes and kilobytes of JavaScript every time a page uh, changes so we must to find a balance between reloading everything every time and so that we will uh, uh, be consistent with web with the old times web navigation but then we'll incur a lot of overhead in transmission and in regeneration regeneration of the page or do uh, doing everything in javascript that but then we are actually collapsing everything into one single page uh, so uh, just an example you, you we we all know that uh, react came out uh, from from facebook and if you, off, if you open Facebook for a moment, you see that on the same application uh, or that is running on Facebook.com, you may have different type of pages. For example, the, the, the timeline, the personal profile, the list of pages, uh, and the detail of a page, for example. But these are just examples that is blurred a bit because we are not interested in the details, but in the fact that the same con container, application container, is able to customize its contents in the from the point of view of the layout and of the contents uh, on what is goes in what goes into these pages uh, um, without leaving the website without leaving the application mm -hmm. so we have different layouts different contents even if some parts for example the advertising on the right and the title on the top are always the same so we see that there are speaking react there are some components that are the same through different layouts and some other components that are switched uh, out uh, in favor of other new components that are that take their place but when we navigate on the website we never see the full reload of the application 
uh, the, the, the HTML is not reloaded anymore, the JavaScript is not reset, is not restarted from scratch. So everything happens inside the framework, but if you look at the top on the, the, of the browser, you see that the URL will change. Uh, it will change uh, according to the location where, where, we, are, uh, where we are. And, um, and this is useful for uh, several use cases. Uh, uh, for example, you have uh, uh, one web page where you have a list, a list of elements and you want to uh, zoom a detail on, on some of them. So we are switching the, uh, the, the, the layout from uh, just a list uh, to a, a double element uh, master and detail. Uh, you want to differentiate your website between log, logged in pages and unlogged pages. So uh, the same page will render differently according to some state some navigation menu on the side or on the top will let you go to different pages and so on. For example, all the trouble we had with the model content uh, uh, is also one aspect of this. So we are sort of navigating to a context where only that model operation is allowed and we want to model that in some way. Hmm. Um, and imagine a normal uh, website where we have the main contents uh, and then we have the user profile section. The user profile is totally different but is that different application or is that a just a different layout and a different content in the same application? So these are the kind of, the kind of problems that we are trying to achieve. I try to, to make a very simple example uh, of what we mean by modifying the, 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 ex the tiny example that we used last week for the deployment uh, structure. And uh, uh, just imagine my, our list of movies that we had um and uh, th this is published of course at the root of the website okay at the local host slash and imagine that uh, for adding something new you click on add and you go on to a different web page hmm? uh, maybe this web page will have a different address for example add hmm? and you see that this page is totally well it's not totally different it's quite different from the other one uh, except from the title which is the same and uh, if we want maybe to click on some uh, detail button, we may have uh, uh, besides or below or depending on the layout we choose, uh, uh, some details for a movie that we selected, for example. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and this will be another URL different from the main one. So the main one will just show the list and the slash details will show details about the movie with the ID number two and uh, we already know how to do that okay we just have to uh, render or not rendering uh, components but right now uh, with what we are able to know what we know today uh, all uh, all the three layouts will always render at the url at the root url we want to make each of them be available at different URLs, so that if i if i want to send the link to my friend i can send the link to this specific page I can share on social media this specific page and not only the main one, for example. And also, if I'm moving between these different views in some way, uh, the browser will remember the previous pages and then it can go back and forward. Um, so, uh, we are in a way trying to uh, regain control of the URLs uh, for as a as a mechanism for, for enabling navigation of, of the website. So navigation is not just handling events and rendering components, uh, but it's uh, uh, using the URL for representing the type of content that we are in in this moment. The, the section of the web page or the type of page. So are we in the main content or, or in the user profile page? Uh, and uh, for example, these are the, the, the URLs from, from Facebook, uh, which are one, two, three, four, five, and many more uh, each of them represent a different type of page so this is your uh, timeline uh, this is your profile uh, page uh, this is a, c a specific post by yourself which is uh, expanded and it shows all the comments uh, this uh, uh, refers to the name of a page which you see from the syntax point of view is the same as the name of a profile of a personal profile and so on okay so uh, the url will uh, um, represent different types of pages and we, when you go and if you go directly to this url uh, of course facebook will start up but, but it will start in that specific page so actually we have one one only one react application which is visible on different urls and these urls are uh, can customize the behavior of the application um, 
can contain information about the content of the page and uh, uh, the browser knows about the URL so you can navigate through them um, so uh, but ju we just remember have to remember that we are still inside a single react application and the react application itself uh, is configured in a way that uh, uh, for example in the with the development server um, it always returns the same content so if you are uh, using a react application and you try to recall many different urls like this uh, all of these urls will always give you the same page or the same application basically and then inside the application a can check internally what is the location that it was being called okay so it's a trick where we uh, are at all these urls we are publishing exactly the same application which is uh, which leaves at the root of the web page but will always be delivered uh, whatever url you are asking and inside the application we can have mechanisms for inspecting the urls that we got and change our behaviors according to that hmm? so how can we implement that uh, let's uh, first uh, analyze two uh, simple ideas uh, i call them wrong approaches because actually they have uh, some difficulties but at least we can uh, reason about uh, uh, the mechanics uh, for that um, one possibility is to regain navigation control of your application with real links okay so i put different links into the page and every time the user clicks on a link the browser does its job it just sends a new http request to the server the server returns and an, as we know uh, the same application again and over and over again and when the application mounts uh, the application queries the url according to the window the location uh, property and decides what to render hmm? this uh, sort of works uh, but it's very simple and uh, it doesn't need anything special in the browser in the client side uh, but the drawback uh, is that at every click the application should be reloaded and remounted well reloaded is not so, so much of an issue because the javascript will be still in the cache of the browser but remounting takes time because you need to reconstruct all the dom okay um, and uh, and if the, the the page contains some dynamically loaded pages and maybe some information called from a rest api it must be called again because from the browser point of view this is a new page and the old data has all been flushed out uh, and it's not so easy so uh, also manually to keep track uh, actually of what is rendered at what uh, urls and so on so we could try a different approach a complementary one uh, we do all the navigation in react like we did in the previous exercises we had uh, these models we had these forms that we try to make them appear and disappear just by using the react state and we use event handlers that will modify the react state uh, state variables and they will customize in a way what uh, what appears this works as we know but it doesn't generate any urls so the application or all the pages will always be published to the root to the slash and so you cannot link to a specific page uh, in your application uh, you could in some way compensate for that uh, by taking control of the history so uh, all the browsers have uh, an history api where you can not just query the history but also can push new items to that so you have the list of uh, all, all the urls you can push them so the browser uh, will be able to to keep a track of, of your history but then you must be very careful because you must handle all the history management by yourself in your code uh, and it's very easy to get uh, tricked uh, by some bug so uh, the advantage of this approach would be uh, that we, you don't need to do any reloading of the pages and the state is of course is maintained because it's the same application that is still uh, is still running hmm? uh, the problem is that we have this uh, state variables that are in some way uh, navigation state uh, that are mixed uh, with the real application state hmm? so it's it's very bad very ugly to see and we must do our own history mangling which is error prone as we mentioned and uh, it, everything works uh, except uh, uh, rebuilding a page from a url because right now it's only uh, like we described this uh, the state determines the, the layout uh, and then uh, it will push uh, the urls to the history but when the user clicks uh, 
on one of these URLs uh, from outside, maybe from a link that you shared to your friends, uh, the application should read this URL and uh, create and construct uh, this, the right page. So setting the mode from an external uh, URL is a, it's a separate issue that we usually didn't have to do before. So it's a new functionality that we need and it wasn't needed in the other case. So what we're trying to do now is try to mix uh, the the pros uh, of uh, both approaches and uh, try to avoid any of the cons uh, that uh, we we mentioned so try to keep the urls keep navigation and keep the same uh, react application alive at all times let's see if it's possible to do that well actually it is possible uh, thanks to a, a library which is called the react router hmm, that we are uh, seeing in detail right now uh, the Red Router uh, is one of the many libraries. Uh, usually, this problem of matching URLs to contents uh, is uh, uh, called a routing problem. We already um, found the, the concept of routing in, in Express on the server side, where we had the different URLs uh, that we could, could come as requests to our web server, and we just have to, to map uh, these requests uh, uh, to the specific piece of JavaScript uh, that will. Uh, implement uh, the server responding to these requests hmm? uh, so routing is already used uh, for matching uh, urls to uh, fragments of code and the same concept can be reused also here uh, on the client side where different urls will activate different parts of the application so that we are using the same term because the basic concept is the same a javascript router any javascript router should manage the url for all the location and the history of the application and also be inside, integrated inside React, so that uh, it can um, configure which components are displayed depending on the, on the URL in the most automatic or most seamless, um, seamless possible way. Um, and uh, we uh, should be careful that when the user clicks on a link, then this link would not trigger the browser to make a new request. But the link should be handled internally by the React application uh, so that the state can be uh, um, conserved, can be, uh, that doesn't need to be recreated, and uh, all the DOM also doesn't need to be recreated, and only React will uh, just rebuild the application. But we, know, we already know that the React is very good at rebuilding page of the parts of the DOM uh, very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, we just have to integrate these two concepts in a, in a single library. Uh, there is not one official version of the react router so the react library uh, does not contain any routing functionality inside there are some libraries available uh, one is the most popular most frequently used uh, is called react router and uh, for uh, accessing them you must install with npm the library which is called react router dom uh, which is called the DOM because there's also an, a version for React Native, which is called the React Router Native. So both of them are based on a depending package, which is a dependency React Router, which is pulled in both by the DOM version and the native version. In our case, of course, we want the DOM version uh, to because we are building a, a React DOM applications and not native applications and so on. Um, okay. This is, so this is the, the, the only package that we need uh, to do this uh, and this React router uh, is able to do whatever uh, we, we mentioned before in a very nice way uh, because uh, actually React router components or uh, libraries are just React components. So this library will uh, implement uh, in its later versions, uh, uh, initially it was more complex world uh, more difficult to integrate uh, uh, with react but in the latest version is very nice because uh, every functionality is just a react component so we are just adding components to the tree and these components will give us the uh, dynamic behavior that we hope for that we described before um, so basically uh, it will uh, uh, integrate the react application by itself with the browser navigation features history back and forward and url and all of this will be mm, transparently done by these uh, new components mm. and the idea is uh, um, to uh, empower the interpretation of the urls so every url will uh, is a string of course uh, but we can give meanings to the strings and according to the 
to the syntax of the string the string of these contents we will enable uh, different uh, components to be displayed or not so we are a set of rules that will match uh, urls or fragment of urls mm -hmm. so again uh, it's the same concept as yet in the in the in the server where we have a, a, a route uh, that should match uh, in this case also is the same uh, according to the some matching rules uh, we will decide how to render the page and uh, there are two types uh, of, uh, of components here some components that are used to link to other pages so to create uh, the link that will go to other pages virtual pages so it will change the url in some way uh, and some other components that are used to decide what to render so where we go and what we show when we are there so the route component is the main component that uh, in, uh, analyzes the url and decides what uh, what should be rendered in the page whether is this a main content is this a profile is this a model form or something else depending on what uh, is the name of the url and for going for jumping from one page to another we use uh, basically the link component so these two are the main the most important ones and uh, all, um, another important component which is the main one is the so-called router component which is basically just a wrapper so it's uh, it's a component that will must contain your complete application and so it will provide router capabilities to the components that you have inside so you only have one instance of this component which is a functionality provider will just provide this functionality to the other and so will enable all these components to work okay so basically it means that uh, uh, ideally our main application is embedded into some router component so you don't need uh, you don't need to repeat it in every file you just need to eat it around the main application file around app.js you should put a router um, component okay that's why it's written outside the files here just to remember that we are inside this uh, uh, big rendering tree that starts with uh, with router but we don't need to repeat it and uh, you can imagine that in one side in one page uh, so one visual page uh, we may have diff many links uh, we, we, they will just render as normal links in this case but you can put uh, what you want buttons images or whatever and when you click on this link you see that uh, you are uh, specifying some url fragments here and uh, when you click for example on the about link here uh, the url will change uh, from uh, slash for example to slash about and uh, uh, the route uh, component uh, will try to match okay about uh, is it matching the path slash yes or no is it matching the, pa the path about yes or no is it matching the path dashboard yes or no and the components who match the path will be rendered so in this case we are rendering the about component and we are not rendering the dashboard component and so in this way we are just in some some sort of selecting which part of the page will be shown we have many alternatives and the choice between different alternatives will be made according to the, to the url which conceptually is similar to what we did uh, in the past in, in the exercise with the with the mod state variables if the mod is insert is the model is delete and so on but instead of having a state variable called mod that we must measure ourselves uh, we just have the, uh, the the page address the page url that is used to understand in which portion of the website i am and so what sh i should render and how to go to one page to another hmm? so it's much much more explicit both for the user of the website and for us programmers also uh, let's start from the beginning so the main component we said is the router component uh, actually inside uh, the react router we have uh, several different routers and you may choose uh, which router we want um, basically the ones that we are interested in are the browser router uh, and the hash router um hash router uh, was uh, recommended uh, some time ago uh, because it worked with older browsers basically it worked with older browsers uh, because it needed to insert a hash sign into the url and this uh, the part after the hash sign doesn't go to the to the server and it's just managed internally by the browser by the javascript 
uh, but currently in after the, the the last version of html5 which published a much more complete uh, um, location api and history api uh, we tend to recommend the browser router implementation and that uses the normal url rs without the strange hash sign uh, in them and um, but we'll see that it requires in some cases in some specific cases it requires some server configuration uh, to be to be implemented uh, usually the import statement is something like that we import the browser router but we rename it just as router because for our convenience okay well, it's not so much of a convenience because we just use the tag router once the component router once but uh, uh, usually it's a way of, of declaring what kind of router you want to uh, you want to implement and this router uh, component must wrap the entire application so you you should put the router tag at the highest possible level in your application um, so for example i have this here the example of the movie uh, application uh, that I modified uh, you see that we are in the app.js in the class uh, app so which is the topmost class and in the render method of the app uh, I wrapped everything also all the all the previous website uh, into uh, sorry to try let's try to make it a bit a bit larger not too much okay I <coughs> I wrapped everything into router um, <coughs> That, that will contain the old content of the website so you see the title the the ad movie and so on uh, we see all, all the other components that will uh, comment uh, as we go as we describe uh, them in the slides okay so router will only appear once and will drop uh, the the outermost component of your application um, uh, i mentioned that we in some cases need some server configuration basically the idea is that uh, if you are deploying a static version of your website so the option number three of the different uh, deployment uh, possibilities then we are copying some files uh, inside inside the build directory for example and if you are uh, loading uh, the slash so build slash um, uh, it will uh, give us the index.html which is fine but what happens if we are trying to in this configuration uh, load a different page for example this one slash dashboard so the uh, server that doesn't know anything about this mechanism will try to locate a file or a directory called build slash dashboard and this doesn't exist of course because dashboard is not a real directory it's not a real file it's just a, a url uh, string and so in this case uh, you we must uh, uh, of course uh, statically mapping the build um, directory but also try to remap every uh, path into the same index.html hmm? so this one uh, we need one rerouting mechanism the same that try to to catch all the routes uh, that will will be static routes inside build and map all of them to index.html so that doing to implement uh, the, the main concept that we have that every url will always load the same application so this web server will ser serve their apis somewhere and everything else <coughs> will always return the same index.html and internally this the index.html that will load the react application internally will process the fragment of the uri that we just ignored during the the, the server side uh, routing uh, and the url mapping this is something uh, specific that we need to care when we are deploying to some static content uh, is not needed with the react development server so in our development environment we don't need to think about this uh, at all but it, when you are trying to deploy it somewhere else uh, just remember that if you are seeing errors uh, then probably you forgot to to configure the server and uh, at this page uh, linked here the bottom uh, we uh, you uh, you find the instructions for all the different uh, web servers uh, to be configured okay um, so the the concept of routing is basically those of selecting ren selectively rendering parts of the page so we have this router component which is a big filter depending on the path i do render a component or i don't hmm? 
so this is the, the basic idea uh, around which all the router library is, is built. Uh, we um, decide, we change the layout of the page by enclosing in different route filters the different uh, uh, options, the different uh, alternatives that the page uh, should be able to render into. Mm -hmm. And all these alternatives are selected just by analyzing the path component uh, of, the, uh, of the route uh, using regular expressions to match uh, uh, the pattern that you want. So in this case, for example, we have a div with two different routes and each of them each is evaluated different, separately, independently from the other. Mm? And so it may happen that uh, both uh, routes are matched and so both components will be rendered or, 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 or only the first or only the second or none of them even. And so the, the, this uh, div will contain uh, zero, one or two different uh, components depending on the path matching and of course there are di different uh, rules for matching for path matching that we are going to see in a moment um, basically the the matching is uh, governed by the path um, property of the of the route element and is uh, this path is normally a regular expression so we'll try to match uh, the regular expression specifying the path with the actual url uh, that will mean that, for example, only a par even a partial match uh, is accepted, okay? Because uh, slash will also, also smash, match slash about, mm? because the regular expression slash will match both the home tape slash and also slash about. It's not a full match, but it's uh, a match, and so it will be rendered. We have uh, three options uh, to customize this behavior. Um, the first one is most useful is exact uh, that uh, turns off all the regular expression matching and does a regular string comparison so for example we go back here we had uh, like a home component which is rendered on the slash but we don't want this slash to match everything else news about uh, dashboard or whatever and so we put an exact attribute here. This is just a short can, a shorthand for exact equal to true. Uh, we just have to mention that without specifying the true value. And uh, um, it, it will convert this matching from a regular expression matching that will match everything into a string matching. So it ju will just compare with exactly the home uh, directory. The, the home page of, of the website. So the, with this, we'll only match on the home page, and this will match uh, on every URL that will start with the slash news uh, and go forward on, um, because we chose this in, uh, in this way. Um, we have also other two options that are less frequently used. For example, strict uh, will check the final slash uh, so usually the final slash is ignored. So you, you may have a, the final slash in the URL and not in the uh, in the pattern or vice versa, and they will still match. If you are strict, then they will uh, be have, uh, they will both uh, need to have the slash or not. And the other option is uh, whether this match uh, should be case sensitive or case insensitive. Hmm? Uh, by default, it's case insensitive. So be careful because uh, URLs. Uh, uh, differing only with case will be merged together but usually it's good practice to have URLs in lower case uh, is not a requirement it's a good practice to, to use only lower case letters in, uh, in URLs and this is actually very simple we just specify the expression to match the the rule and then we decide when the rule is matched what do we want to render do we want to render a specific component and so we specify that with a, comp a property called the component and uh, uh, or maybe we can just nest something inside the route okay in the example that we saw before um, like so here we had some component nested inside the route and it's the same is an alternative syntax for doing the same for specifying which component will be rendered by this route if it's matched um, or we can specify a function a function that we uh, so with the render property a function that will uh, return the, the JSX uh, that we want to render in the case the route uh, is matched hmm? 
so we can specify that if we have one component uh, or if you have an expression with many components we can define a function and this function may also be uh, say more intelligent more dynamic uh, with a, a specific with a third property which is called children hmm? uh, the render function behaves in the same way as component if the route matches then render this and that's all the children property behaves differently children will always render the content here so it will always be rendered whether the path matches or not so you may ask yourself what is it for if it always renders well because each of the nested components will receive a match object that will describe whether it was matched and how it was matched so the idea is that we want to render these components normally but each of them internally maybe will change their behavior or their slight appearance according to whether it was matched or not so imagine a menu or list that will show must always be shown but when one of them is matched by the url we need to highlight it and maybe we need to show this the, the, the second level menu and so all the other ones shall always in, in any case be rendered even if they don't match uh, but they will render differently so in this case we use children so we take, we all we want to render all the children that return from this function but each of them has the capability of, uh, of adapt itself uh, to the matching status of each of the elements okay so it's a bit uh, more advanced uh, to build uh, and but it's a very uh, it's able to shorten a lot uh, maybe many different routes uh, into one route uh, with dynamic behavior and uh, actually the, all the three forms uh, receive properties like we, we mentioned the match properties in the, in the third one uh, ba basically uh, all the sub components here or the function here or the function there they will receive three parameters the most important one is the match the description of the match and the other is just the current browser location and the reference to the history of the browser hmm. these two are like seldom used but the match object is uh, uh, is important um, the match object is inside a property so it's passed uh, is added to the props of the component if you are using the component syntax or is basically the first parameter of the function if you're using the render or, or children syntax and match itself is an object with four component which is uh, parameters is exact the path and url or is null uh, so the most important information is uh, when when these uh, uh, and in the case of children of course it's only applied in the case of children because uh, in the other two cases with component and render if the if it doesn't match then the component is not called with children if the um, path is not matched the component is called anyway with a match equal to null hmm? so in one null is passed to the render function that may behave accordingly in all the other cases the most important uh, uh component of the match object uh, is uh, of course params what is params is a mechanism for uh, setting parametric routes the same mechanism that we see we saw in express where a route may have some wildcards that can be associated to some uh, some value hmm? and the same happens here so maybe we have a matching with some placeholders and the params uh, uh, object inside the match uh, property will hold all the values of these placeholders so for example we can define a route like a slash post slash id by using so the um, the column name syntax the same syntax that we had in, in express and uh, so we are de uh, we decided we render the component called post uh, with uh, whenever the url is uh, slash post slash id so this uh, um, uh, ID will be available uh, as uh, ID as an ID object inside the params property of the match object. And the match object uh, we say it is available uh, directly in the route, but it will be also passed as a prop to post. So also the post. Uh, um can have this property and can examine this property the from from the match object 
so basically uh, it's a way to extract information from the route and change uh, the rendering according to the, to the information that they received uh, so for example we have we assume that we have be a, a list of posts uh, notice the s is plural and so we use a find method for extracting the post whose uh, <coughs> id the id of the post would match the uh, id that we described in the post uh, uh, in the url basically in the url parameter so slash post slash 37 we'll set the variable id to 37 and we can do our computations uh, so route is the basic mechanism routes uh, are as we say inclusive this means that uh, if we have many routes uh, each of them will examine separately and independently from the others its own path and it decides by its own whether to render or not whether to render the component or the function that uh, is being passed um, so it may become a bit difficult to exclude some routes in some context for the reason we have the, sh the switch component and switch will uh, um, choose the first route that matches basically so which will uh, will uh, wrap several, several routes so usually a switch will contain many routes inside and uh, uh, these routes will be evaluated in order and the first one that matches will be selected all the other ones will be ignored so we are sure if we have a switch statement that only one exactly one of the enclosing routes at the first level, nesting level uh, will be executed and all the other ones uh, will not be rendered so if the first one doesn't match then we check the second if the second checks uh, matches then we render this component and we forget about the others and and so it's a way of uh, rendering an in an exclusive way either or uh, one route or on another hmm? if we omit the switch uh, maybe all of them will render depending on the matching status with the switch only the first one so we can have an end with uh, with a uh, with the switch uh, only one with the render or an or behavior without the switch where every every um, say valid path will be rendered every route uh, matching the current path will be rendered uh, for this reason just remember that uh, the order of routes is important and so we should always start with the most restrictive rules uh, that will be executed only in narrowest cases uh, and then go back uh, uh, with the uh, uh, let's say more generous rules and for example here we have the default case so if no route before is matched then I match this one a route with no path is always matched okay so we uh, in this case we can have a no match component that will describe uh, maybe some default uh, interface because none of the previous uh, routes were uh, was matched hmm? in this case so it's uh, it's a, a sequence of, of ifs uh, that only the first one will match uh, just be careful also uh, about the syntax for uh, about how you choose your urls for example you have a, a path like uh, slash user with user uh, as a parameter but we also have a path called slash about so depending on which one comes first the behavior of the website will be different if we put about before then slash about will go to the about page and will not match any user path here so we cannot have any user who is called about uh, if we switch these ones then we will match the user first and then about later so if we write slash about it will try to render the user component called about mr or mrs about and this path will be never never uh, matched because it's a subset of the previous uh, um, parametric uh, route so the rule is always the same start with the narrow routes and then only later uh, are the parametric ones or the wildcard ones hmm? or still better try to avoid these ambiguities okay so instead of calling slash user uh, slash with just the name of the number of user write slash u slash colon users for example so the, the prefix u will make it uh, clear that you are trying to work uh, with the user id and not with the 
the about page or something like that hmm? so we should also be careful it's better to write at the beginning what are the urls of our application that our application should want to to respond to and to implement um, so these were the main two components uh, the route and the switch for deciding what to render for analyzing the url and then rendering the page on the other hand of the of the pond uh, we have the components that will change the url will jump to a new page and they are very much easier uh, for example the link component uh, will just create a link to a new url it like an a normally it's just a normal a component uh, with the difference that uh, of course it's a react component it will also manage all the all the history and it will not cause a real reload of the page like a normal a would do so we'll in some way, some way intercept the, the default action of the a and substituting that with the router functionality mm -hmm. so instead of a links uh, with anchor links uh, we just use link, list link components and the destination instead of uh, being the in the href um, attribute is in a, in a two property of the component so link to link to will uh, uh, create links uh, to a specific uh, url mm -hmm. Of course, this could be any any JavaScript uh, expression, the, the destination, so it could be just a string or a dynamically built string so that we can construct these parametric routes. Uh, we construct uh, the string on one side and we analyze the string on the other side. Uh, in this, this destination can also be an object where we separate the path name from the search uh, uh, parameters if we are trying to construct very complex uh, um very complex uh, uh pass mm -hmm. but uh, we it's not it normally is not the case unless we are trying to build uh, very complex applications um so this is a description of the object that can be the destination of a link uh, the component is just the path uh, and the set of query parameters uh, uh, if we want to to, to uh, generate dynamically the the um, the, the, the route uh, uh, with with dynamic values but uh, uh, if if we need to do that i will refer you to to go to the documentation of the router that will give you more details and examples especially of how to use this functionality uh, in addition to link we also have a different functionality oh maybe maybe we can try uh, before going to another link to uh, have a look at our application so we are we have enough information here for seeing how it works uh, for example uh, we have this um, list of movies and then we can click add and add will replace okay the list of movies with the um, the form here for uh, for inserting a new movie so it is the same form as before it didn't change it and if i click cancel i go back to the initial value uh, we are we already able to do something like that in pure react but we, if you see the url we see that if i click add then the url will change it will become add and if i click on cancel it will go back to the initial part so actually we are working and if i go back with the history you see that it's remember the set of actions that we did before is remember that i can go back and forward and so on well uh, i forgot to change the title here but uh, i could also do that how is this implemented with the router so let's pick up the editor and we see that basically let me enlarge the code um, i have the title my move is at the top and then i have a switch with two different routes one route one router will match add and the other router will match everything else basically slash or something else uh, why don't they, I, in the, in the first case, I render the movie form. So if the path is add, I render the movie form. And if the path is slash, I render the movie table. Practically, it didn't change anything else. I just added this route around the component. And of course, the router around the application. We already discussed that and so that some components are only rendered in some times and not others uh, i also have a third uh, um, component here 
which was not in the previous version is called uh, the the uh, slash detail slash id uh, route uh, which is used for creating some detail box here uh, when you uh, click on some of the of the buttons here okay and so we will render this component uh, and it of course will change the url there and what we see is that when this component is shown then the table is also still shown so it does not disappear i can do that by uh, not putting the exact if i put the exact here if i had to put a, a, an exact specification here on the path i save you see that when i click on the detail well in this case everything disappears because it will not match anymore okay in this case we are rendering uh, everything with slash and also slash details so if the url is slash detail this part is also rendered so it's an inclusive behavior usually i include the movie table for any path except add add comes before so when the path is add or matches add maybe add slash something else if we want to make it more complex uh, then it will only render movie form and everything below will be ignored otherwise it will render everything and uh, and this part the second part here is uh, this uh, alert here component uh, is only shown when the path contains detail and uh, in this case uh, you see we see an example of how we extract from the detail number this information uh, let's try to click on on this one which is number three okay the url is less detail is less three three is mapped to the id so we see the id here and uh, the id is available i use this here in the in the find as a props match params id so match the match object is added automatically to the properties of the rendering function you see that yeah, i use the render syntax instead of a component syntax because i want to create a component here basically i don't want to create another component i just created this one here in the in the rendering function and so the the the, the parameter is the are the properties the properties contain the match object which is automatically inserted and the match object has uh, the, the list of parameters from which i want to extract the id and so this uh, uh let me extract a sp a sp uh, one movie object and i can uh, of course at, at this point use the object as you want uh, normally is uh, nothing special uh, to do hmm? uh, just a detail when when implementing debugging this uh, uh, you need to be i needed to be careful uh, because uh, it looks like uh, this url is always defined and so you always find a movie but in some cases you don't find a movie and so you want to render the alert only if uh, the movie has been found correctly and uh, remember that uh, the render method is always called uh, twice one before the state is defined and the, the second one after the state is defined so there there may be a, a moment in which the movies are not uh, uh, present in the state yet and so in this case this will be null and we, we, we it will generate errors there okay so uh, let's be careful about uh, uh, not making assumption that this state is already loaded in this case the state may be loaded and so we can have the movies or the state may be still uh, you know in the initial state and the initial state will already trigger a render and so we will render the component with uh, an empty state and we should be sure that we are doing a same thing even with the with the empty state so always try to remember to to handle special cases uh, and also remember the state uh, as an initial value at least an initial value and a value after the mount uh, operation that will contain this component uh, and so just in, in your mind always think uh, what happens with the default state what happens with the loaded state and maybe what happened after a state modification and so make sure that our rendering will uh, consider all the possible options okay uh, and how to open and close this is very easy because if i just click on close you see that this close uh, link is just it just 
a link to slash so whenever the url is the home page i will have the default rendering of the web page even here the my movies title will just go to this i don't need to handle any special cases i will just have to change the url to the home page and i'm sure i get this so this is a nice part of react which uh, uh, i'm setting a state and in, in this case the state also contains the url and the rendering of the application is totally predictable by the state that i just defined and if i click on add i'm sure that they got this and if i click on my movies or cancel i just need to go back to the slash hmm? and so both the close button here when displayed and both the my movies title there they are just links to, to slash and uh, you see it's very easy to reconfigure the application just by linking to a url and the url will do will decide which components will render uh well anything else is still working abc with the five stars uh, i don't know and we add then it will be shown here so it's nothing uh, exactly as before i can delete uh, and so on um we also mentioned that it's a special type of link a special type of link uh, for uh, usually menus or list of items or navigational menus and so on uh, the idea is that uh, if we, in many times we have a list of links uh, and one of them uh, is clicked by the user clicking the link will uh, send to a specific url and we are re-rendering the page on that new url but that button knows which is the one the good one matching the url okay and so maybe that button should have a, a, a different uh, visual display and so uh, the nav link behaves exactly as a normal link but when the url uh, linked by the button is the same as the url in the browser then a special class is added or a special style you decide is added to the specific element uh, but by default uh, this class is called active uh, which reminds us what, of what uh, bootstrap is doing and so this is what gives this effect if i click on this element okay this part appears because the detail url is uh, processed but also this button becomes uh, highlighted and if i change the button the lighting moves i'm not doing anything special here let's see at the code of this button here the code of this button is inside the the form component i think uh, movie form no sorry the movie table in the row movie row here in the movie row I have just this button uh, with the eye symbol, so it's just an image with the eye that uh, is wrapped into navigational link, nav link. And this uh, renders as a button, a button like component here, and it will go to this detail slash movie ID, detail slash three, detail slash seven, and whatever. Uh, so this will be rendered as a normal button, button light, normally. But when the URL of the browser is exactly like here, detail slash three. So this button will have, uh, be a navigational link to detail slash one. So it's not is rendered normally. This one is a, a link to detail slash three, and so it will have an added at a class which is in, in this case an uh, active class and so it's not just a, a, a button light but it will also be a button light active and in this case i'm using bootstrap bootstrap will render that in a different color this one is not active hmm, because it will link to uh, detail six i have the id here for debugging purposes uh, and detail six on this link is not the same as detail three that we have in the url now hmm? so this is uh, usually is uh, totally automatic will just uh, depending on the on the navigational link you are clicking it will go to the url and then we it will understand reanalyze this url and if it matches it will just add a class to the component the active class and then it's up to you with your css to decide how the active class will change the appearance uh, of this uh, specific element hmm? so it's very it's nothing complex but very handy because it, it um, 
it saves you the time from having two different component many switches at every time because you want to render one or the other depending on the URL okay uh, we can uh, change the cl uh, class uh, normally decide which class name to use or just use a style directly at the CSS level uh, to apply to the element uh, if you want mm -hmm. all the other behavior is basically the same as a normal link there's also a third component for uh, changing the, mm, the, mm, the the page so to change the URL and to navigate to a different uh, page which is called uh, redirect redirect is a strange component uh, it's like a link but it clicks itself automatically so a link will just render something and when the user clicks on the link then the URL will change redirect is different because it will trigger the change of the page immediately immediately when you're rendering it so when you're when you're trying to render a page with a red redirect component in it that page will immediately disappear and will be replaced by the target of this redirect operation so this component will never be shown when you're trying to display it when you're trying to render it it will change the url okay possibly to some other page that will not redirect away so it's a way to escape from the current page if i want to go away from this page okay maybe the user can click somewhere and it will get him away but if i want from my code to change the page well i can do that by rendering a redirect component so it's usually basically to force a location change prog programmatically okay so uh, this happens for example in my example you can see this behavior in the in the form here in the insert form when you insert a new uh, movie uh, i click on the add button the add button is not a link it's a button and the button it should not be directly handled by react or by the router because i have my own event handler so what i'm doing have a look at the form and especially at the button so uh, the button I use I'm using the react uh, bootstrap library for making it simpler so the button is a normal uh, bootstrap button here uh, type equals submit it's not it's normal no? it's nothing special we know it's a submit type button and so when we click on this button I'm uh, calling the submit event uh, on the form so the action of this button is not to change the url is to submit the form and so the handle submit is defined here of course handle submit will prevent the default submission of the form and will do all the state changes like we know uh, adding the movie to the database to the back end and also setting the state uh, uh, by resetting the form for example mm -hmm. and changing the key to regenerate the form and all the details for managing the form state mm -hmm. uh, but if i were to stop here i could write add and the, the form will stay there because in the add mode the url is add if i click on add and everything will be done here then i will be blocked in this page i need to click on cancel or close or something else to go away from here because uh, this url didn't change the handle submit event is not able to change the url we are just inside an event handler it's not the user who clicks around so there is this trick where we can set a variable in the state for example submitted through that will tell the component that we had just submitted it it's a normal state variable and we are using this submitted to render the redirect component so before rendering the real form if state submitted so if the, we set submitted to true in the state then we are not rendering the form we are rendering this strange component to this redirect and rendering the redirect will immediately change the, real, the url to slash and uh, of changing the real to slash will re-render all the application and so we know that the rendering slash will, will uh, means uh, rendering the table 
of course this state must be initialized to false uh, here at the beginning so it's a, a bit indirect because inside uh, an event handler we cannot really change the location of the browser we need to set a state uh, that, that will trigger a render this render will check the state variable render the redirect component that will change the location and trigger another render that will render differently the whole application it's a bit a three-step process to go from one page to another page and you could be uh, well you, you might not like really to have this range of flags uh, in, inside the state but it's actually the more the cleanest way in the in the react way of thinking that everything every every change in the in the rendering should be a consequence of a change in the state you cannot just arbitrarily tear a component go away or be, be displayed the component will react only to the change in the state that's <laughs> that's the meaning of the word react the component only reacts to the state if you want to change a component uh, you need to change the state mm -hmm. this is the idea so this is the strange uh, what this strange component is for uh, if you want to avoid all of this you could just use a, a very brute force location dot push uh, to change the location url and change directly uh, force the browser to go to a different page but with this in some way will uh, be an uncontrolled behavior of the application that, that the router has no control uh, to so whenever you find yourself inside an event handler where you want to, to change the page you must remember this uh, redirect component uh, that should be only rendered upon a given state variable hmm, by uh, uh, behind uh, the change of a, or a value of a given state variable and this is the, the let's say the clean way of doing that even if it requires uh, one state variable more and a couple of, of more components okay so that you are sure that all the transitions are handled by react and by the router and you don't need to care about uh, setting the location uh, pushing and uh, replacing the, the last the last item of location or so not because um, it might be easier just to add uh, one uh, using the push for going for changing the location of the browser but a lot of very small bugs uh, may, may happen if you're trying to abuse of this because you need to be aware of, of how the different browsers are behaving mm -hmm. so the react way is just try to render this redirect so if so uh, we saw uh, we had just a handful of components uh, router for wrapping the, the application and then route and reader um, yes route and redirect uh, with the switch of course uh, that will be able to, to control the exclusivity of the routes uh, that are used to conditionally render some part of the page and the uh, link and navigation link uh, that are used for jumping to different parts of the page uh, and uh, we we just modified and uh, you can you can find on github the code for this uh, very simple application that we modify with the routes uh, and uh, i find it's very um, it's much easier to think about uh, the application of different pages with different routes uh, and that should uh, re uh, render different uh, um, uh, different kinds of information it's much easier to rely on the url then on a set of custom uh, mode or state variables inside your application of course this is a way to scale up your application every page may be different may have different behaviors may render different components and changing from one page to the other is just a matter of changing the url and it doesn't have any overhead in reloading the application on in reconstructing the state because you are still inside one big react application maybe the only drawback is a big react application because you are you are loading if, if your application is made of 20 different pages then you are loading all of them at the beginning and only rendering one at a time so the initial load time will be larger and also maybe the memory consumption will be larger there are techniques more advanced to only load the parts of the pages that you need it's called in some way it's called it's called splitting you, have, you want to split your application in different parts but it's a much more complex topic than we than the level of detail that we want to do than we want to use 
by the way this kind of techniques is very useful uh, you remember the models you remember the filters uh, and uh, you see that uh, you, if you store the filter into the url it will be much easier uh, to render the page it will be also very useful for uh, login pages uh, so uh, uh, the, the render uh, we have a set of pages that will be under the uh, after uh, after the login will be rendered differently and you can very easily uh, switch from a login uh, page uh, from the public page to the logged in page just by changing your url and checking of course that the page <coughs> that the login was successful okay so it's just a one uh, one more uh, technique it's very easy to understand because it's just based on five components uh, react components uh, and the concept of the url mm -hmm. and these components are just behave like normal react components Thank you, and uh, we we'll see you for the next video in a, in a some hours. Some hours.